you will also understand why recording for us is important. Because of the number of ta participants here, we won't be able to give you any rights for microphone. Whatever questions you have, you can ask, write, us direct, uh, write them directly in the chat box, which you've already been using it to introduce yourself and telling us where are you from, where are you joining us. And if you can't hear us, just check the audio symbol, whether it's green on the top of the menu, which you can also see in the middle of the screen. If it is green, it's activated. If it's gray, that means you have to activate that. And in the middle of uh, thing, if you have still you can't uh, hear or you have technical issues, we would request you to log out and log in again. And to check your audio settings, you can click on meeting under that menu tab. You will find the fourth option of audio setup wizard and you can check your uh, connection settings, uh, audio settings. I'm really delighted to talk about the three speakers today and on behalf of the Duet Institute, I would like to thank each one of them to take the time out, on, especially on Saturday, and be here to answer all our queries, answer all your queries. Um, first of all, we'll start with Mr. Apurva Mahendru. Mr. Apurva Mahendru has been associated with the day day for over 20 years and has handled various assignments. He has held key positions in various education projects conducted on behalf of European Commission. He's currently Director Marketing at the day day Regional Office in New Delhi. He's responsible for South Asia region. He will be telling us about the requirements to study in Germany. Over to you, Apurva. I haven't deliberately switched on my camera because of internet connectivity. Right. Thank you so much, Preeti. Can I also request you, Preeti, to maybe give the poll to uh, the participants before I start my presentation? Thank you so much for reminding. I'll do that. Thank you so much. So you just have to tell us what are you interested in? All right, so I think this group is uh, exclusively a group of uh, students interested in bachelor studies. That's very clear from this, so thank you so much. I think that's uh, good enough to know so that I can concentrate on, on those relevant things that are important for sure. students. Sure, I'll just... Back. So to ensure that you're able to see the screen, um, I will purposely not switch on my webcam right now because that might just lead to some latency and uh, internet bandwidth issues. But I will switch on the microphone later on in the end once all of us have presented and we have the Q&A session. Uh, but for now, welcome and thank you for joining this session here today, uh, which is about studying in Germany. And since we know that the crowd that we have with us here is um, of students who are interested in bachelors, I will leave out certain, certain slides or maybe not emphasize too much on some of the slides that you may see on the screen. I'll just skip those. Um, I'd like to introduce myself once again. Uh, I've already been introduced kindly by Preeti, but uh, why am I here? Yeah, who am I and what is this day our day? Again, my name is Apurv Mahendru, I'm the Director of Marketing of the DAD Regional Office in New Delhi. And I represent the DAAD here today. I believe some of you may have heard of it, but uh, many of you might not have. So the DAAD is the Deutsche Akademische Austauschdienst. And this organization is uh, basically a German, largely state-funded autonomous organization uh, that had been established almost 100 years back, actually, for the promotion of um, academic relations between Germany and other countries in the world. That simply means that we try to bring students and academicians and scientists from Germany to other countries and vice versa. In that connection, we have offices the world over. As I said, I represent the New Delhi office that's also responsible for some of the neighboring countries. But I believe most of you who've joined us here today, as I could make out earlier from the cities that you typed in, happen to be from India. So this presentation is also focused on students from India. 
I'm not going to get too much into this, but you have to just understand we give information. Yeah, we support universities to internationalize themselves and we give scholarships to the best. That's in a very simplified form, just the, the task of my organization. I don't want to go into the nitty gritty right here, but rather focus on what you want. And this is probably one of the things that you're interested in. Um, you're all young students, I believe still completing your class 12 in most cases or who have just appeared for class 12 exams possibly or about to. You might be wondering whether Germany is the right place for you or not. I think this slide should help you maybe to some extent um, make up your mind why Germany is a great place and these points are basically responses that we get when we typically ask students you know what made them choose Germany. This is what they answer. So I'm not going to read out each and every point you see here, but the fact remains that the excellent study opportunities, yeah, the rather uh, moderate costs of study, the strong international focus, you know, the fact that a lot of English language programs are also available. These are points that attract a number of um, students to Germany. I am getting a few messages that the voice is breaking. I'm not sure whether um, maybe Preeti, if you could just confirm to me. My signal well, seems I to can be fluctuating. Is I, that? I can hear you okay. clearly and a couple of them are saying the voice is breaking. I've advised them to check A, the audio settings if the loudspeaker is and check the internet connectivity. It also depends on the personal. Yeah, a lot of people are uh, saying that it's very clear. That's wonderful because it also shows me the connection status shows excellent on top. So I'll just continue yes. in that case. Thank you so sure. much for reconfirming that. Thank, Thank you also to the participants for the same. Right. Uh, so now that I've kind of given you some reasons why to opt for Germany, then once you start looking at Germany, which some of you might have done, might uh, have come across certain expressions words such as Fachhochschule or words such as Universität. So yeah, Germany has a number of institutions of different kinds and possibly Universitäten and Fachhochschulen. These are the two most relevant types of institutions actually because that's where the large chunk of students goes to at least from our region. So at this point of time, maybe I can just emphasize or just uh, briefly explain the two types of institutions so that you can decide which is more appropriate for you. Universities in Germany simply called Universitäten or technical universities called Technische Universitäten are basically large establishments have 40, 50 thousand students at times. And uh, they offer all possible subjects in all disciplines at all levels. So this means you can do a bachelor's, a master's and a PhD. There are approximately 110 universities in Germany currently out of a total of 400 odd universities that exist. The focus of universities is uh, uh, very research oriented. So basically very fundamental science oriented and that's uh, the approach that many universities follow. The other type of university is the University of Applied Science as the name itself is suggesting the universities of applied science have a strong practical focus. Yeah, they have a lot of linkage with industry. These universities are typically smaller in size. Yeah, the groups are more coherent and the subjects offered are also what we define here in India probably as some of the professional subjects, yeah, engineering, business administration and the likes. And typically universities of applied science uh, can give you a bachelor's and a master's degree. So this is applied focus, that is research focus. That's good for you to know to start off with if you want to make a choice as to which university you want to join. But of course we also want to know how is the atmosphere in Germany for students? How many students are there? Are there foreign students? So yes, absolutely. Germany is very, very popular. It's the third most popular um, destination for international students. Almost actually currently 14% of students enrolled in Germany are international students. It's a very large number and the number of Indian students is no exceptions. In fact, Indian students form the second largest group of international students after the Chinese and currently the number stands over 20,000. The slide does not reflect the latest figure. 
but the number of Indian students currently stands at more than 20,000. So as you can see, there's been a steady rise, yes, and uh, a lot of students are opting for Germany because of many reasons. Um, some of them, of course, as I already mentioned earlier, was you know the very reasonable, cost-effective, moderate study course uh, study costs. Um, some other reasons also include international programs, which are now taught in English. Uh, there are few of them. There are currently approximately 2,000 study programs that are taught in English, but of course, a large majority of them in Germany at German universities are taught in German. But nonetheless, the uh, international programs are very popular. So if you do not know German and you would want to study in English, that's an option. But if you want to study in German, then of course, a larger plethora of study programs will be available for you. But for that, you would have to have German proficiency. We'll talk about that a little later. This is the schedule, as you see. Um, German universities generally have two intakes, the winter intake and the summer intake. But uh, in most cases, the major intake actually is the, the winter intake. So I'm going by that example. This year, it's probably too late for those who uh, haven't already started the, the action. Uh, but if you're planning to, let's say, apply next year, then I would suggest it's a good time to gather information. The sooner, the better. But what's most important to understand is that the session begins in September. And the deadlines that most universities and most courses will have will differ, but they will typically fall between February and May or maybe March and June. So th there's a flexibility because there is no single date. Different universities and within universities, also different study programs will have different deadlines. So keep that in mind. Apply as soon as possible. And if you get an admission letter, then apply for your visa also as soon as possible because getting a visa can also be a somewhat time-consuming process. Time-consuming because the, the visa officials from your, well, consulate or your um, embassy have to cross-check with the, the university town that has given you admission. So that process, you should assume, will take approximately two months. And getting appointments in peak season can also be rather difficult. So start that process just as quickly as possible. That's all I can say. Living expenses, it's always uh, an interesting point here. Yeah, what will you spend? This uh, figure, the official figure currently actually stands at uh, five, 853 euros per month. And um, that is an, an, an average basically, and um, probably a, a higher average because this is what you'll spend if you're maybe in a bigger city where expenses are higher and rentals and other uh, costs are higher. For smaller towns, the expenses can be somewhere in the region, maybe even six to 700. So it depends, of course, on your spending habits and also on the place in which you're studying. But officially, this is the per month figure. Yeah, so that uh, is uh, some little over 10,000 euros that is required, which you would also need later on when you have to apply for your visa. You will have to open a blocked account. So that is the official figure that you have to keep in mind and the money that you will have to keep handy. I mentioned that uh, Germany is uh, very moderately priced in terms of education. The higher education in Germany is state subsidized. So all public universities are subsidized by taxpayers' money. That means German students and international students are treated alike. And for a majority of the programs, there are no tuition fees. But you have to keep in mind that even at public universities, certain programs uh, will be charged for and uh, fees can be in the range of five to six thousand euros per semester uh, but in a large majority of the cases they do not charge any tuition fees there are also a large number of private universities in germany although the student enrollment is low um, so these private universities of course uh, are permitted to charge tuition fees which they also do so depending upon your choice you can choose which kind of university you would rather prefer to opt for Working part-time is also, um, because we're talking about costs right now, so definitely even when you're saying an amount of 60,000 rupees a year, uh, 
sorry, 60,000 a month uh, is a considerable amount. So if you think that you would like to augment some of that by working part time, that is surely possible. But uh, we always tell our students that studying is a full time profession in itself. So we do encourage part time study, but at the same time, we caution not to overdo that. Do a little bit so that you earn some pocket money. That's fine. Yeah, you socialize a little bit. You practice your language. So those are benefits of part, uh, working part time. But you should be cautious that it does not interfere with, uh, or rather, adversely affect your academic life. Right now, I know that um, all of you are still in school, so probably thinking about jobs could well be a, a far shot. But nonetheless, I think ultimately you're all working towards a future because. At the end of the day, at some point, maybe four or five years down the line, you would want to secure a job, make a future, make a career. So when you complete your studies in Germany, one big benefit is that you actually are permitted to stay on in Germany for 18 months, for one and a half years. And during that time, it's possible for you to search for suitable employment. That's a big benefit. And um, as I said, you have 18 months time to search for a job which I think is uh, it's pretty much enough for somebody who's really serious about it, uh, definitely is able to secure a job during that duration. And once that is the case, then your study permit will accordingly be extended. Um, a statistic maybe that I can share with you is that approximately half of the students who complete their degrees stay on in Germany. Of the other half that uh, don't stay on in Germany, some return to their home countries and Others opt maybe even to go to some third country to experience another culture and another education system. So Germany does permit you and give you those flexibilities. Fine, now I'll, I've got some slides here that focus on the bachelors, uh, which I will do. But I have to also tell you that um, we have with us two other speakers later on. Uh, who One of them for sure is Dhruv, is an Indian student who actually went to Germany through um, to, to, to do his studies and he has some experience of uh, the student colleague as well. So probably he might also be able to share more. But generally speaking, when we're talking of a bachelor's program in Germany, in most cases, it is a six semester course. There's flexibility. There could be some that are longer. Most of these programs at the bachelor's level are taught in German. I mentioned to you that there are some international program, 2000 approximately, but of those, a large number is at the master's level and there are few bachelor's programs that are taught in English medium. So yes, the majority of the bachelor's programs will be in German. You require German language proficiency if you want to join one of those programs and that proficiency has to be at least at a B2 level, in some cases also a C1 level of the Goethe Institute may be asked for. What I'm giving you is a generalized information. The universities are very autonomous and every university can set its own requirements and prerequisites. And even within universities, different courses will have different prerequisites. So once you zero in maybe on the institution of your choice, please do remember to check all the points that I'm telling you. I'm giving you this information as an orientation. Don't assume that all of this will apply to the choice of your university. There may be deviations. Now, when we're talking about applying after a class 12, um, my assumption is that many of you or most of you will have completed your um, studies from an Indian education board like the CBSC or CSE. So if that is the case, then after class 12, you are not eligible for direct enrollment at a master's, sorry, at a bachelor's program. What you have to do is that you have to do a bridging course and that bridging course is called a student colleague. So that's what you see on the slide, right? If you happen to be from an international board, Cambridge or something, then you do have the possibility to get direct admission into a bachelor's program, provided you fulfill certain criteria of subject combinations at higher level and so forth. I'm not getting into that right now. I'm focusing on the second, which is the student colleague route applicable for students from Indian CBSE boards. After completing class 12, you have to enroll for a student colleague, a foundation course or a bridging course, as you want to call it, which is conducted in Germany, which is conducted in German language. So it is basically an extension 
you could assume or you know simply say it's a 13th year of your school education which you do in germany but all of that is done in german medium i'll come to that a little later and then you have some other options if you think that i wouldn't want to go in for that what you can also do is after completing class 12 you enroll for a bachelor's program in india supposing you want to go for an engineering program uh, what you can do is you enroll for an engineering program in india in any recognized university it does not have to be an iit it can be any recognized university you complete the first year of that particular study course successfully which means you you pass all the subjects and once you have that formal 13th year of education you can then apply for direct admission to a bachelor's program in germany at that point of time you will still require your german language proficiency which you would have to show but uh, in terms of the other the formal qualifications that's something that you can also do a fourth alternative is clearing the iit jee exam but uh, this is not really an option that many students opt for because in case they get admitted to the jee in an iit there are very few that then decide to leave that position so this is what we spoke about yeah if you come from a cbse or icse board state board you require language proficiency to join the student college at least a b1 would be required here in some cases it could be higher you identify the university that you would like to go to and accordingly the student college will be matched because student colleagues are always kind of associated with universities so you should ideally first choose the institution where you want and the course that you would ideally want to do after completing your student college and then you will be um, guided to the student college that is appropriate in your case you study there you complete all the classes at the end of the student college you have to give an exam which is called the feststellungsprüfung as you can see the second last point on this slide the feststellungsprüfung that is the examination you give after completing your student college and thereafter once you clear that you then become eligible for a bachelor's program at a german university this means at that point you then apply for admission to a bachelor's there is no automatic admission to any program per se but you are then eligible to start the next process or the next procedure so this is in a nutshell basically again what we just now spoke about identifying university and the courses and that successful completion does not guarantee admission but it makes you eligible for an undergraduate course that's something important to remember yeah and depending upon uh, your subject focus as i say if you are interested in for example doing a course uh, that is um, you know what we would call a stem subject a technical subject at a university then you would enroll for a student college and specialize in the t course which teaches subjects like mathematics and science and technology for example if you want to go in for a let's say commerce stream so to say you want to do business or economics then you would um, in that case join a student college where other than german then you would be taught subjects which are more relevant to that discipline such as business economics and so forth so you can see that depending on the area that you want to study your student college and the course within the student college that you will do uh, will depend on on your choice and there are different kinds of student colleges in different states of germany which uh, as i said will then be allocated to you depending on the university that you ultimately want to study at so that's uh, some research that you should do i'd seen earlier dhruv had also an interesting slide so he'll be talking probably a little more about these things so uh, therefore i will not emphasize too much on this right now i've already given you a hang of basically what it's about and since you people are listening to this probably for the very first time some of the details might also overload you a little bit therefore i don't want to delve too deep into this but you now know that you can't get a direct admission just after class 12 but have to undergo this process here i also mentioned earlier uh, the way of enrolling for a bachelor's program after completing one year in your home country so this is what this slide is basically talking about yeah we've already spoken about this 
And of course, you have to do your bachelor's program in India from a recognized university, a UGC recognized university. That's also important that it should be uh, the university from where you complete this program should be recognized by the University Grants Commission. Otherwise, it could lead to complications later on. We spoke about some of the international programs earlier on. This is what I had shown you. If you're interested maybe in searching for some of the programs that are in English, although they're limited, but this is the website that you can search for. You might be lucky and maybe find the course of your liking, but as I said, more choice is available for programs that are in German. So these were just some screenshots. Once you go into the International Degrees website, we have created the website to give you a fair idea of what uh, basically clubbed all the necessary information within one website. So the university, the deadlines, the course curriculum, the fees if applicable, the contact persons. So all that um, gives you that information. Nidhi is asking about the website. So yeah, I'll come to that in one of my later slides. You will have some links that will lead you here. Uh, but I had already actually shown that. I'm just going back to one of those slides where that was there. So that, one second, you can see here, daad.de international minus programs. Yeah, so this is going to be the website where you can get those details. Thank you, Preeti, also for typing some uh, further websites where you can also access this detail. I'm almost through. I know that we are a little bit over the time, but I need just one or two minutes to, uh, actually not even two minutes. I am already, I think, here at the last slide or penultimate slide that I wanted to share with you. Information about us and our scholarships at dart.in. Information about international programs at studyin.de. More information about how the student colleague thing works, you can find under studentcolleague.de. Uni Assist talks more about the admissions procedures that you will follow. I've not delved upon that at this point of time. And uh, the Anabin database, which uh, gives uh, information about the equivalence of Indian and German degrees. And with this last slide here, if you happen to be in one of the cities, we have our offices in majority, in not majority, but in some cities where you people are also located. Currently, of course, because of the COVID situation, we are in lockdown, but hopefully in the near future, we'll be available to you at our offices also. So I think I'll leave it at this and then we'll take up questions later on. Thank you so much, Apurva, for all these details. I'm sure this will help them and with these links, they can research on the app about that further. So, our next guest, our next speaker is from Germany. Thank you, Andrea Spals, for getting up on Saturday so early and being here. Mr. Andrea Spals holds a bachelor's degree in biology as well as Staats examen. That's a German degree required for teaching in advanced secondary education and it's in English and Biology from Heidelberg University has acquired and currently he's working as a teacher at German high school and pursuing a PhD with a focus on literary and cultural studies at the Heidelberg Center for American Studies. He would um, just let us know, inform us about how the German universities work. Over to you, Andreas. Thank you, Preeti, for the kind introduction. Hello from Germany, from Heidelberg. Um, and I'm especially happy to see so many people from Neuda um, here. I've also worked as a teacher for the Goethe Institute as an assistant teacher last year for a few months. So I'm happy to see you guys. Um, and as I said, I'm in Heidelberg right now, the city where Germany's oldest university is located. And for the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will be giving you an overview over what it is like to study in Germany. As we've already heard, um, the German education system is quite diverse. There are lots of different universities. These are only the public universities are listed here. More than 100 universities, more than 200 universities of applied sciences and quite a lot of other uh, schools of higher education. A website I can recommend you right here in the beginning is www.hochschulkompass.de. 
Um, I did some research on that website. It's a database for study programs, and it gives you as much as 20,000 different study programs. Um, so that is quite quite a lot, um, and you might want to have a look at that website too. Um, Germany also has 16 federal states. That is something uh, worth noting. And it might sound strange, but each of these states is in charge of its own education system, basically. Uh, this is usually more relevant for lower levels of education, but there are a few things that are important uh, also if you study at university. We've already mentioned uh, the tuition fees. General tuition fees were abolished a few years ago, but um, there's one state, Baden-Württemberg, the state where I currently live in also, um, that has recently introduced tuition fees for international students. Um, these tuition fees amount to 3,000 euros per year. I think that was mentioned before. Um, it's still less than many other countries might charge you, especially if you compare it to fees that, uh, that you are charged in the US or the UK. Um, but it's definitely, definitely something you want to keep in mind if you consider studying at a university in Baden-Württemberg in the Southwest. Um, in general, this is something I can uh, only recommend you, uh, no matter which place, which university you want to study at, um, you should always get in contact with uh, this university of interest way before the application deadline to find out about these uh, specifics, uh, specific fees, specific requirements, documents you have to um, have at hand and so on. I can only repeat the educational landscape is very diverse and it's impossible for me or for any of the others, I guess, to give you very specific answers about uh, certain study programs or certain uh, universities. Um, the next slide uh, is about um, the concept of the University of Applied Sciences. We've already learned about that. Uh, I just want to throw in here the German term here for you that you will um, know uh, what it's about when you come across. The German term is Fachhochschulen. And as it has been mentioned before, um, they usually have a stronger focus on application of what you learn at, uh, at university and some uh, ties into the industries usually. Um, universities usually still have the, the monopoly on, on the research. The top-notch notch research facilities are usually found at the traditional universities in Germany. On this slide, I've collected some uh, photos uh, to give you some impressions about what German universities might look like. As you can see, there are some uh, universities that's quite common that have a university campus with relatively new buildings, uh, also laboratories and other facilities, um, research facilities and so on. But many um, traditional, long-standing old universities like the University of Heidelberg uh, in the top left corner have uh, also um, yeah, remained uh, some of their faculties, let's say the humanities and languages, in their old buildings that might be uh, scattered over the old town. Uh, but we also have a campus uh, where the, the sciences are located. Um, we've also talked about uh, the semester times already, so we'll skip uh, most of this slide. Um, we have two semesters, winter and summer semester. Um, we haven't talked about the break yet. This is something um, German students like to call the semester ferien, semester holidays. Um, but obviously these are usually more, less, than, less than holidays. Uh, you have to do a lot of studying during these times. There are mandatory practical courses or internships. You have to write term papers depending on your studies um, and so on and so on. During the semester, your study will most likely look like this. The lecture is also in Germany definitely the most common form of education at university, as anywhere in the world, I guess. Um, you will, however, also meet in smaller groups with professors, with researchers and tutors. Depending on your subject of study, this will be in the form of seminars, or practical courses. And each of these courses will have their own assignments or their own credits you have to collect if you want to complete the study program. Um, you will also uh, spend a lot of time in individual study. Um, as you see in the, in the bottom right corner, many German students like to do that at the university library. That is quite common. Um, 
as you proceed in your study, I think that is uh, worth noting, you might get in contact with research in more specialized areas of your field. And in these higher semesters, you will encounter more and more lectures in English. But in general, as we've learned already, um, especially for the basic courses for bachelor's and undergraduate courses, it's really necessary to know German very well. And you have to um, apply with uh, some kind of certificate that proves your German language proficiency um, to give uh, universities the idea that you can can actually deal with the basic courses and exams that will be held in German. Um, the next slide gives you uh, an impression what of what is also a typical part of German university lives. Uh, you will spend um, much time on campus, you will get in contact with other students there, students from your courses, courses from other subjects. You will meet for a coffee, uh, for a lunch at what the Germans call Mensa. Uh, this is a type of cafeteria which is very popular, very large uh, facilities where many students go to at all times during the day to grab a bite. And it's actually also quite cheap, um, so reasonable prices there. These facilities are usually run by the local Studierendenberg, uh, which is a concept I also wanted to draw your attention to because I think it's quite typical for Germany. Um, these Studierendenwerke are state-run, they are non-profit, organizations that are closely associated with the uh, respective universities and they will uh, offer a lot of services, deal with many aspects of students' lives um, that go beyond the actual studying. So they, they care for catering, um, they have lots of advisors on different subjects um, and an important thing that are also in charge of is university accommodation. Um, and yeah, I have to say that accommodation in, in Germany in general, in most of the cities, is quite expensive. Um, so there's a relative lack of living space and the rents are very high. Um, this is why most German students also live in shared flats, um, either private ones or in students' halls that are usually owned by the Studierendenberg, the local one. And um, this is something you also might consider. International students are, of course, eligible for this kind of accommodation, especially because it's often difficult to find a room uh, if you're looking for one from abroad before you arrive in Germany. Um, the only thing you should keep in mind is that the places are, of course, also limited and uh, that you should apply early. Sometimes it might even be advisable to reach out to the Studierendenwerk before you even know that you will be admitted to a certain study program because there's such a, such a high demand for these uh, flats. Um, on this slide, you um, you see how a typical room might look like. It's not pure luxury, certainly, but it will have a desk, a bed, and a cupboard. Um, you will share a kitchen and most likely the washroom also with several other students in the uh, in the student hall. Uh, this certainly has, has its disadvantages sometimes, depending on with whom you're living. Uh, but it's also a great place to get to know others, to um, socialize. They usually come in rooms, common areas where you can meet, uh, where you can play games and uh, also practice your German language skills, of course. Um, you might have noticed the bicycles in front of the buildings here. This leads me to another aspect that I think is worth mentioning, um, transportation. Uh, Germany is well known for, for its car manufacturers, of course, but uh, for German students, uh, it's typical to use public transportation. Um, um, there are usually semester tickets that are offered by universities, so that gives you a cheap opportunity to travel to and from university. Um, and what's more, lots of students also own a bike, um, especially in the small and mid-sized university towns, so you might consider getting a bike as well, uh, which is usually a convenient and sustainable means of transportation, of course. Nowadays, there are also a number of companies um, that rent out bikes for a few months only, even if you're only here on, a, on an exchange or something. Um, and many students take advantage of these uh, opportunities at the moment. The next slide, again, gives you the average monthly expenses. So I will skip on that. It's uh, basically the same numbers that have been mentioned before. Keep in mind that uh, this is only an average. Um, there might be differences according to the city you're living in. 
especially cities like uh, Stuttgart or Munich might be a bit more expensive and you might have to spend as much as 900 or a thousand, even a thousand euros on your living expenses. Um, and this also leads me to uh, one of the most important questions I've uh, been asked regularly by internationally, international student applicants. Um, everybody is interested in working alongside studying. Um, and as we've heard, it's uh, definitely possible for international students, but you should keep in mind that there are some limitations imposed. Um, we've, we've talked about the 120 days. Uh, another limit that's usually imposed is that of 20 hours per week. Uh, this is just because they, if, if they grant you a visa for studying, um, they want to make sure that you still have enough time to actually do it um, and not spend more time working than studying. Um, what, I can, what I can safely say is that you definitely won't be able to fund your stay abroad only by working. Um, as, as has been said before, it's, it's more of a pocket money you earn on the side. And always keep in mind, if you're working too much, your grades might also suffer and you might take longer to complete your study program. Um, so my recommendation is here, definitely you should, keep have, you should have most of the expenses covered before you come to Germany. Especially, and that lead me, leads me to my last slide, because you also want to enjoy a part of the student life. Uh, that is also um, something that is typical um, here, the leisure activities. You will spend uh, free time getting to know Germany, hopefully, some, uh, some Germans also. You can make use of the university program. They usually, usually have a great sports program. Um, and during winter times, of course, not to forget, there are the popular Christmas markets that you might want to visit. And with these impressions, um, I'm going to finish here and say Danke für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit, which is thank you for your attention in German. Vielen Dank dir, Andreas. Thank you so much, Andreas, for letting us know about the requirements of German universities and also how German universities work. Thank you once again. So last but not the least, our next speaker, I'm sure you're very excited because he is doing what you want to do. And he's going to talk about life as an international student. He is Mr. Drew Qatar. And I would just say a few lines before I give the mic to Drew. Drew is a student of University of Freiburg. He has been studying educational sciences since winter semester 2018-19. He has attended student college as well in Heidelberg in 2014. And he has been an active part of PASH mentoring program. Few of our schools are PASH schools, and he has learned German in school, as most of you have learned. And he's also part of an intercultural mentoring program of University of Freiburg from past few years. So, Drew, over to you. Thank you, Priti, for the nice introduction. Um, yeah, I introduced myself a little more. Um, I studied in a CBSC school. Uh, in 2013, and then I applied for university in uh, in Germany. I applied to five universities, and and then I got in one of few few of the universities, and then I gave an entrance exam for student colleague Heidelberg. I got in that also, and then I did my student colleague for one year, and after that I reapplied for my bachelor program, and then I got into University of Freiburg. I did my bachelor's here, and now I'm doing my master's also here in the University of Freiburg. Um, and uh, I'm doing. I'm. I think my volume is now audible or better. Is it better now? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So that was uh, that was small uh, background on me, and uh, now I can tell you what we international students have more than a normal German student, maybe or maybe. A, Student life, modern normal student life. Um, so, as an international student, the most important thing, I, from my perspective, is networking. That you get in touch with people who will help you navigate through your studying time or before even studying, doing your application process. So, there are like there's like international office of the university, which is very helpful. They are very nice people, and if you have questions or doubts, they help you with it. And then there, uh, there are events, 
in the first week of your university which you can attend there are online events such as these uh, which help you a lot uh, to get information and then there is Facebook I find Facebook very helpful there are groups such as Indian students in Freiburg, Indian students in Berlin, Indian students in Germany which you can join and you can get in contact with other students, international students living in Germany and uh, you can exchange with them and even in future if you have a problem you can present your problem in those groups and they help each other out. We are, that group has helped many people, I have helped many people find an accommodation whenever I could in those groups so yeah it's a very helpful thing uh, and I, sh I think you should take advantage of that whenever you are planning to st uh, study in Germany or when you are going to start your application process and then there's obviously the for PASH students uh, there's a PASH platform it's also very helpful there are also very nice people over there and uh, since it's a PASH network so it's more exclusive and, and uh, there are the students who are living in Germany or still have a contact in Germany so yeah so these are some of the platforms which I use or which I have uh, recommended to other people which I recommend to you guys as well so yeah um, mentoring program I am a PASH mentor and uh, a university mentor as well so I think mentoring program is very important so when you are applying for your study program and your accommodation everything check whether your faculty or your university have a mentoring program as well if they do get to enroll in those programs because it's like having a nice friend uh, in your first semester uh, to navigate and help you we like meet once in a month and to talk about stuff and uh, that helps a lot the mentoring program is a, is a like small emotional support it's not like they solve problems for you but they can be supportive because you're in a foreign country, in a foreign city and um, you, you may don't know somebody there but through this mentoring program you have someone to speak to and then there's student associations uh, student associations are wonderful associations um, and, and people, can, people can join them and there are different kinds of associations for example I'm studying educational science, so my I have educational science association which I can join, or there are also like social activism, feminism, or international associations as well. Few cities, big cities like Berlin, Frankfurt also have Indian student associations, which also you can join, and uh, they are wonderful associations, and uh, yeah, so those are also very good factor to include in why you start studying you can join those association in your first uh, first semester and uh, there, are, there are wonderful activities there and wonderful workshops to attend it's a, it's a very good extracurricular activity and it look, looks good on your CV as well uh, some of the most asked questions are about timetable part-time job and food so regarding timetable uh, many people ask me whether they get in a free time to do their hobbies or to do to, to take part in extracurricular activities I can say yes because uh, it's one of the advantages of German universities is the flexible timetable you have the choice to rearrange some of the stuff if it doesn't suit you sometimes you can do a course later in semester something you can you can do in advance so there's this flexibility of timetable which allows you to pursue your own interests sometimes and uh, pursue your hobbies, pursue your part-time jobs but not all the time but many times I have done the same during my bachelor program and it helped me a lot part-time jobs, yes, you can get part-time jobs there are not all the jobs are office jobs um, but uh, uh, some of them are like in McDonald's or in a, in a cinema hall or something like that so job is there but it depends what you want and and uh, one thing I would like to say it is my personal recommendation that um, that uh, part-time uh, part-time jobs should not be taken in first year second year it's my personal experience it's it made different for you because in first year you're navigating to your social life to university life you're doing assignments getting used to the whole system so doing a job could be a little too much so I would recommend, like I started doing third year so part-time jobs 
it's good good idea they cover half of the expense some, sometimes um but uh, i would recommend that okay uh, do it later in semester or, uh later in semester or, uh, later in the year food many parents ask me this question not from students mostly the parents are concerned about the kids and they ask me uh, whether there is enough vegetarian food opportunities at the university's canteen and i can say yes university is a very inclusive place there are all sort of things for each and every one of us and uh, so there's uh, there's every possibility out there i have a picture here uh it's taking a little time to load yeah so it, i took this picture in my first year of my bachelor's it's a indian arabic dish uh, it's dal with rice and arabic bread so yeah so they do take care of us sometimes and most of the times i mean you have vegetarian options but they are very intercultural they are very open uh, university is a place where you can see people around the world coming together so don't worry about that uh, the university life is really relaxed as uh, one, one can't imagine uh do's and don't with german culture uh, germans are very particular with, with the timelines with their punctuality so meet your deadline even your application process make sure you have your all deadline jotted out and you meet them it's very important to meet your deadlines get the information don't be shy just write an email if you need some kind of information contact the right people and get the information don't wait because sometimes an opportunity can can get passed if you don't get the information in the time carry cash uh, germany has a lot of card system i know people get really used to it but uh, i have learned also the fact that cash in hand is, is really handy thing especially in your first few weeks in germany because it takes time to open the bank account or to access the bank account in germany so carry cash a little bit with you uh, germans like small talk so if you're walking down the street uh, mostly germans uh, say hello how are you and you can reply back in the same way but, but that doesn't mean that they want to have a s- full conversation with you it is a polite way of saying it germans are very polite and especially if you know somebody from class or your neighborhood they always uh, greet you on the street and uh, that's how german works so it's a small talk it's a, it's a politeness with german shows to everyone and to each other as well germans are not spontaneous i have to say we plan everything here we have uh, like i have a calendar diary in my bag all of my classmates have a calendar diary in their bag each and everyone have a calendar and we make we plan everything like even if you're watching a movie it, we discuss it like two or three days before so that's one of one of the thing you can't respond you can't be spontaneous in germany in india we are a lot spontaneous i know from my friend circles but not that much in germany not too loud um exception of the big cities obviously cities like berlin might be louder uh, sometimes as loud as delhi but uh, um most of germany is, is a very quiet place there are many quiet cities there are many peaceful cities so you might not be get you might not get to hear that much of noise but yeah so people are not that loud in germany so that's one of the thing that i have learned so far that don't be loud and now for people who are going to apply for student colleague or are going for student colleague soon um i would say do a thorough research uh yeah do a thorough research uh to get all information in one package uh, like make a word document make a ppt if you want make anything you want but do a very very thorough research collect all the information from all the sources it's very important student colleague is like a school so we have to do it like a school uh, i in my student colleague i did a s course i had history geography german english and sometimes literary studies or maths depending on what you want to focus on uh so yeah so soon going to school we had a class from 8 till 1 o'clock and then we go back home have a lunch uh do a homework and go out with friends the normal way that you do it in school 
the yeah, student college and foundation courses are same the same thing student college is the german word for it and foundation course is the english word for it so this foundation course is more like school less like university because once you go to the main bachelor program everything changes is everything is totally different so student college is more like school so make sure that take that in mind that when you are going to student college you are going to do one more year of school except the fact you don't you don't have to wear the uniform that's one of the perks so yeah and get in touch with the alumni of the student college it helps exchange notes with the ex students uh, it can help you study uh, if you can access german textbooks german school books online do that for the preparation of your entrance exams um because that helps you to prepare for example when i was applying for student college hanover they have a math entrance exam and a german entrance exam so for math i had to study math a little bit in german before giving the exam so try to access those german textbooks if possible online they can help you prepare and facebook instagram obviously are the big help big time they are people there are people who will help you with it uh and uh, you can get in contact with people there are groups on facebook student college mention student college berlin you can find those groups and join them uh one more point temporary accommodation is a good idea in case you don't get accommodation before coming to germany so what you do is you book a youth hostel for few weeks and carry less stuff with you because if you're going to shift from one place to another during your first semester that's very difficult when you have a lot of stuff with you so carry a minimum stuff with you and uh, get the temporary accommodation and in the meantime keep looking keep looking for the permanent or more permanent uh, accommodation which i did um we are living right now living for the last 5 years is a private flat we am sharing with someone and but before that i had to change few places in my first week or first two weeks of um, bachelor's so that's one more that's one thing which you, you should do for sure that carry less stuff so so that you can actually um, look for the accommodation easily that and then there is an example of the table which i was talking about the research i did the research during my bachelor time before my bachelor time this my table was a lot bigger i reduced it to four columns here as well as of many columns in many pages to so do this kind of research when you start preparing for the application so you have all the facts in your hand and you can um do it everything easily and so the visa process is easy for you and everything gets done on time so make sure that you're on time you have all the information right collect the information in one place so that everything goes easily and this is one of the helpful tools which i have given many people over the years i have taken it also like making this table many of us many of us do that here in germany so i would tell you to do the same when you start researching start putting all the information in one place uh, in respect of the fact how maybe on a when maybe on a copy or something on a flip chart or something but do it it's a very helpful tool and it will help you later in doing your application process to see you okay, what where and how has to be done that's all from my side and i would have to say vielen dank für euer aufmerksamkeit für ihr aufmerksamkeit thank you for your attention i will take the question in the now in a q and a uh, session with you guys so yeah nice talking to you and uh, yeah. back to you preeti thank you so much thank you to all our speakers get to the best speakers to switch on their cameras so that we can take the queries Okay so my first query is I will require to give test RS for medicine medicine programs I am from an international board ID
Who's going to Should I answer this question? Yeah, please. please. Okay, now, uh, well, basically, test, uh, test us is yet not compulsory per se, uh, as far as my knowledge goes. So if you have a test us score, it would be uh, good to hand it in, but uh, it is not a compulsory uh, test that you have to give. So the answer here is no, for the medicine program, you'd probably not require the test us. Okay, thank you so much. So again, the student is from an IB school and want to know what are the criteria we need to fulfill to get admission in bachelor's. Okay, um, you see for IB schools, basically you, you have six subjects out of which two should be languages, one should be a foreign language. Then uh, you have a subject from the social sciences group of your choice. You have one of the subjects from the arts groups, which can also be of your choice. And when it comes to the natural science subjects, like biology, chemistry, physics, you have to have one of these, and you have to have mathematics. What you have to keep in mind is that either mathematics or any of the natural science subjects that you choose, they have to be of the higher level. That uh, is going to be a must. You should have studied all these subjects consecutively for two years. And in addition to that, you'll need a score of uh, a grade of four points in each of your subjects. So 24 uh, grade is uh, a requirement. These are some of the basics, but read this thoroughly. You'll find that information on the website, but I've given you most of that information here in a nutshell. Okay, thank you so much. What are the good options to study commerce after 12th in Germany? Who would like to take this question? Um, I mean, does anybody want to take this or yeah, should I just? I, I, I think uh, the commerce, I'm not from commerce background, my course is more of C, uh, psychology and sociology, but for my friends what I've heard so far, a little vague actually, there is no specific answer to this question. I would yeah. just suggest uh, to this person, can I just just that you look at the internet? Uh, I think uh, let uh, Purva finish that, and then Dhruv, you can also sure. can add on to that. Apurva, yeah, you finish that, and then Dhruv will add uh, according to his experience. Apurva, it's your turn now. Can you hear me? Hear me now? Yes, I hope I'm audible now. I can hear. I'll just switch yes. off my, my camera because my... Sure, sure. Internet is a little, little erratic, maybe that helps, yeah? So we'll switch off or pause the camera, okay. You please continue. I'm having some issues with the internet here. The yeah, put While we wait for Apurva Dhruv, can you, would yeah, you like um, to continue like with to your? That, uh, for my friends, what I've heard, uh, the commerce chances are good. Uh, but mostly the, the natural sciences are more asked for because there are more uh, job opportunities in natural sciences like engineering than in commerce, but the commerce options are good as well. Uh, it depends what kind of subject you want to do and, uh, and where you're doing it. So it it's, depends on your focus point actually, which is, which is the main thing you want to do. So it dif differ from, uh, from course to course and uh, from subject to subject, uh, but the chances are fine. And uh, it's, I can't make a statement in particular, but that's from my experience. Okay, Apurva, are you there? Yes, I hope I'm audible now again. Yes, you are okay. I uh, partly followed what Dhruv was saying. I agree with him. See, all subjects, and that's actually something that I want to emphasize. Germany is renowned for engineering, 
very true because it has produced uh, some of the best engineers in the world and uh, undoubtedly is a very good place to study engineering. But I think Germany is equally good if you want to study any other subject. So whether it is, you know, what you were asking about commerce or social science or any discipline, rest assured that all these universities are top class in all disciplines. So this is just a general answer I can give. You don't have to be afraid that, you know, whether it's good for that subject or not. Germany offers world-class education in pretty much all subject areas. Just zero in on the university of your choice, the course of your choice, and you'll be good. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so another IB student, maybe I assume, is taken German class 11th and will be doing also continuing class 12. Will that qualify him or her for B1 or B2 level? I don't think so because you need to have that level. Apurva, would you like to... Uh, to that. Yes, I agree with you. Whether you have uh, studied um, German in school, this, it will reflect on your certificate for sure, but uh, you will still need a certification very clearly that says that it is equivalent to a level of B1, B2, whatever that may be. So in addition to that certificate, you may have to give a test or examination to get that certificate. Yeah, and Goethe certificates are well recognized, so you can write a Goethe Prüfung. B1 B or B2 and get the certificate and that will be well recognized. Okay. If someone has German as a that whether it's having in class 12, will it qualify for B1 proficiency? We have already answered that. Uh, I mean, it's again the same thing. I am an IB student, have done the proficiency test till A2, do I need to do the B1? You see, again, I'll say if, if you're a, an IB student, then you can directly enroll for, uh, for a bachelor's program, provided you fulfill the criteria I mentioned. Now, if you're enrolling in a program that is taught in English medium, then you can go ahead and you will get an admission even if you do not have that German language proficiency. But if you want to enroll for a program which is taught in German, then you will, in addition to whatever you have, need to uh, prove your German language proficiency up to at least a B2 level. Okay. So next question, any one of you can take that. Can I apply for the university before clearing B2? Um, I can take that because I had a similar experience with one of my friends. Uh, some universities are sometimes lenient when you show them the course participation certificate that you're participating in a B2 course and by the time you start your university, you will be done by the course and you can show the B2 certificate if, if required, but uh, but it's not like that you can do it afterwards. You have to have to show the certificate if required at the time of admission, although you can uh, give them a participation certificate at the time of application. That is in some cases, in some universities, not all universities. They differ from university to university. You have to clear with yeah. the international office. You have to write an email and ask them the question, and they will tell you. Yeah, I also wanted to say that only varies from university to university, because I know for sure for Kaizen Cloud, and even before you write the entrance exam, you have to uh, prove that you have a BHS certificate. Okay, the next query is, if we have attended one year bachelor's in India, then still do we have to do the student colleague? Uh, no, then in that case you do not. That was the second route. Either you do the student colleague or you do one year in India and then apply for the bachelor's. Either of the two. Mm -hmm. Andreas, maybe you can take this query. What subjects are included in social sciences? Do you have any idea about that? Um, I'm not really sure if I understand the question correctly. Is that about the is it that about the course, the student colleague course, or is it a general question about uh, social sciences? I think it's about undergraduate degree. I mean, in India, it's so we India have different streams. So under you, man. Yeah, if we're talking about humanities here. Um, then um, in Germany there's not that uh, of a strict um, 
separation between humanities and science sciences. So I would say uh, humanities could uh, could include everything from languages to to economics even um, and uh, social sciences, maybe history, politics, and so on. Uh, so if that answers the question, I don't know. Okay, the person who has asked can write in the chat. And meanwhile, we take the next question. It's for Apurva. Can you get any scholarship for bachelor's degree? My question would be, do you need any scholarship for bachelor's degree? <laughs> <laughs> that is a good question you posed. Yes, uh, well, we have a large number of scholarship options available. But honestly, at the bachelor's level, there are very few. And as we said, education is state subsidized at public universities. So what you're really looking at is every student who enrolls at a German university is virtually getting a scholarship because they're not paying any tuition fees. You just have to cover your living expenses, as you mentioned. But yes, if you still want to have a look at what kind of financial support is available, I can tell you that there is no scholarship for a full bachelor's degree, but there may be some short-term scholarships available for some bachelor students. You can check our website for details there, but there is less at the bachelor's level, as we said, because it is already completely subsidized and you don't pay any tuition fee. Thank you. Engineering, which language? Uh, uh, yeah. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I'm a little bit. There are also local scholarships, but then you have to check once you're here. Uh, uh, Drew, can you? University based, and, uh, but then the university website also for that. Uh, Drew, could you repeat that? Because you know, all of us were talking at the same time. I was, so it was, not I was saying uh, could you that repeat what you said. Trips from universities for students who are already part of the university. Once you start studying and getting good marks in your semesters, then you can apply for scholarship for next semester sometimes, or sometimes for a whole year. So you have to have a good grades in your first two semesters of the first semester, and then you can apply sometimes for a local scholarship at the university or at the Shudian and VAC. But then you have to check out the scholarship thing on the uh, university website and get in uh, contact with the counseling at the university. Good to know that. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Andres, would you like to add something or should we move on to the next question? Because question. that is something I've recently talked about with a friend of mine who studied engineering. Um, and he actually said that uh, some of Andreas is. Oh. Andreas will be back soon. Uh, we will definitely hear his experience. But meanwhile, if Apurva, you would like to take that query about the medium of instruction, engineering, which language, German taught or English taught? Yeah. Okay. So the medium of instruction is actually not dependent on the subject. That's what you have to understand. Engineering programs can be taught in, or there will be some which are taught in, in English, but a large majority will be taught in German. And the same holds true for all other disciplines. So therefore, uh, that's all I can really tell you at this point of time. If you want to join a program in, in German or in English, that is a choice you have, but both are available. OK, so Andres is also back. Andres, please continue. You were sharing your experience. Yeah, I think I, I heard what, what um, Apurva said. Um, I can only second that. I recently talked to a friend of mine who studied engineering and especially the very traditional um, areas, let's say, if you want to go into car manufacturing, they are very German focused still. So even even some research might be in German. And if you want to work for a company later on, it's also um, important that you have good command of the German language, of course. Thank you so much. Uh, so I think the um, student is talking about chartered accountant courses. Our CA courses are available in English after 12th in university, in German university. Well, not in the way we know them in India. They are not. Uh, I think the next question you've already answered, the medium of the instruction. Uh, 
you have uh, you already mentioned that a foundation course is same like student college can i apply for university or foundation course before qualifying b2 yes. level i think they've already answered that query as well or so if they are asking for b2 level before uh at the starting of student college then you have to show it that's the if they are, if they are asking for it that's the point i think they are asking about because of written foundation course uh and uh, apurva i think you've already mentioned in your presentation that is about completing one year of bachelor's in india and what can we do then would you like That's, that's the second option. Yeah, exactly. Summarize again, just quickly. Uh, yeah, as I said, either uh, you do the student college to become eligible, and if you do not want to do the student college, then you enroll in the first year of a bachelor's program in your home country in India. But it has to be in the same discipline. So, if you want to, let's say, uh, study engineering sciences in Germany at a bachelor's level. then you will have to enroll for an engineering related program in india oh. you complete the first year successfully by clearing all the papers you cannot fail in any paper you cannot skip any paper so once you have successfully completed the first year passed all the papers then you're eligible technically to apply for admission to a bachelor's without okay. studying thank you um andreas could you please tell us whether math course comes under m course is m for math or Sorry, m for medicine m is the course uh, you attend if you want to um, if you want to study medicine or anything uh, biology related and they certainly have uh, math as a subject among the courses you have to study in the student college definitely yeah thank you so much anybody would like to add to that that math course can also be in under any other course category Yeah, well, in the T course, obviously, for the technical related courses, mathematics will surely also figure there. Yeah, thanks. So it can figure at a number of places. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody has heard if you do your C one, you are exempted from the student college. Is it true? No, it's not. It's false. Okay, this is why I don't understand a lot about the entrance exam. So I, I don't know. I don't about. the question is not very specific uh do universities accept goethe test or is test daf required universities accept the the goethe qualifications they also accept the test daf both are acceptable mm mm-hmm. Okay, so any one of you can take that. After getting an invite invitation letter, if I want to refresh my German with a course in Germany, um, which visa should I apply? After getting an invite, you don't have much of time actually. If I remember from my experience, I got an invite in August, and uh, my entrance was end of September, so I didn't have that much of time to to have an extra visa and and do a refresher course in German, and and then go again. Uh, I would say if you are if If you get a visa earlier, then you can go a little early and uh, join the special course or small German course in the city where you're going to apply for student college. And uh, there are some uh, online courses sometimes uh, or uh, uh, small language courses in the university also. But I don't know if if you're getting invited after that, uh, you have the German student college anyway. So. So you don't need any special visa to apply for it. Yeah, same category. category right? The fact that you get time to attend a course before the starting student college—that's the main thing. Because the visa itself takes six weeks. So if you're getting an admission letter in August, six weeks, then you're already just middle of September, and then you're going to Germany for the student college anyway. So if you do want to do a refresh in Germany, then do it online or. Uh, Yeah, or just uh, have a just private tutor if you want to have, but uh, there's no there's no time possibility to do a fresher course in Germany before starting a student college. Yeah, if you plan well in advance, then you can also join again one of the Goethe courses, whatever. Yeah, yeah depending on your level, which course you want to do. Uh, okay. 
uh, how difficult is it to follow courses taught in Germany? Uh, uh, see, if you're doing student college, if you're not going to Germany after one year of bachelor in India, then it get easier. Student college helped me a lot to to study subject in German. It is easy. It's really easy for you, make easy for your bachelor program because you get to use you get used to it for for, for it, and you can have one year time for it also. So if you're doing student college, it gets easier. In the first in the first few classes, it might be a little new and difficult. A little alien, too, but over the time it's uh, like normal school, uh, and you might need a little extra help. But uh, it's not a it's not a very difficult task if you have studied German before coming to Germany, and and you have the the levels and everything. Then it's not uh, very difficult, but you get used to it over the time. Okay, and the next question has already been answered to attend whether you need to attend the student college if you want to do bachelor's in India. Are there golf scholarships in German universities? Well, that's a very specific question. Hello. The DAD does not have such scholarships, but um, uh, I guess there are some sports universities and some sports universities may have some of their own special scholarships. But honestly, I've never encountered this question before and can't give you an answer offhand. Do you have any idea on uh, Maybe I can add to that. I can say that golf is not a particular popular sport in Germany. So there are certainly other countries where you might have a greater chance of encountering such a scholarship. In Germany, it's just not a very typical sport uh, people pursue. Okay, so it was related to the same thing. Can one pursue golf and study simultaneously? Okay, to get into the student college, do we need to give an entrance exam? Yes. Entrance exam. Yeah, I was saying entrance exam uh, can be different. Some yeah, universities only have German entrance exam, and some universities have. Uh, different subjects. So, for example, Constance, I think, has German, maths, and physics, and Han Hanover has German and maths. So, yeah, so entrance exam is there, but there are sometimes multiple entrance exams. Like it's the same exam, but you have to give in many subjects. So, yeah. Is IELTS course are they required to get admission into German university? Well, in most cases, universities do insist on some form of English language proficiency. But more importantly, at the time of visa application, the embassy or the consulate will also ask for English language proficiency. So it's better if you have an IELTS or a TOEFL score ready. Mm -hmm. I am an IB student, have qualified for A2. What are my ch chances of getting into university right out of school? Do I need to do a big run? Again, as I mentioned earlier, if he's enrolling for a, for a German medium program, then definitely A2 will not suffice. Then he will have to have probably more than a B1, B2, I would assume, is what most universities ask for. Yeah. SL, maybe. Abanisha won't do in for IB. It's like A1, basic level. So you have to do HL or a SL. OK, are there any sports scholarships offered by German universities? I think we can skip this. Yeah. Uh, it's similar to the golf thing that you're saying. There are no specific scholarship that we as DAD offer. But there are other funding organizations that may have something. Uh, I'm not qualified to uh, really. Uh, you do you want to say something? Uh, I have never heard of a sports scholarship as we have in India, a sports quota. Uh, but uh, there are private organizations locally. But we have to, one has to check online and get in contact with the right people. They aren't, I have not seen from university as such until as you are studying sports sciences. If you are studying sports sciences, yeah, then it can be helpful. But uh, other than that, no. Is computer science counted as part of science 2 in IB? I think they are different groups. Apurva, would you like to take that or whoever wants to take that? As far as I know, com com computer science is, is not uh, a part of the sciences. I mean, if you're talking of the natural sciences group, it doesn't figure there. It figures in the sixth group. 
where you have fine arts and music, and there I think computer science op uh, uh, yes. option is available. Okay. In that last category, I'm not sure how technically it is named, but it, it does not figure in the typical uh, natural science category, yeah. but in the last category of group fine six. arts and music and yeah. the group six. Yeah. Okay. Andreas, maybe you would like to answer this. I want to do MBBS in Germany. Can you suggest me good city? I will be doing till B2 from Goethe Pune and then I'm thinking to move. This is a very complex issue. Um, the MBBS is, uh, is a bachelor, I think, in, in medicine and surgery. Um, so you can't really study that in Germany, actually, because uh, in Germany all doctors, uh, people who want to work as doctors later on, uh, med medicine, um, they will have to uh, get the so-called state examination from a German university, which is a degree that is, is different from uh, the bachelor's master's system. So if you want to study something related to medicine, um, to become a doctor later on, uh, you would have to uh, study within this uh, degree program, which is like a five-year uh, degree program, essentially a combined bachelor's master's. So about application, I think uh, Apurva and all of you have already, I mean, again and again to, uh, said something. Uh, so I'll move to the next question. Is the score of IIT JE of any relevance for entrance to any student college? And what is the relevance of class 12 CBSE board exams? Or class 12 board exams, it's not CBSE. Well, the IIT JEE score is not relevant for admission to the student colleague. That much is for sure. Okay. Yeah, again, the same question. Do I need to do my student colleague if I do my 11th and 12th? Yes, you need to. If we have done one year of engineering in India, do we have to write an entrance test? Well, if you completed the one year, the first year of a bachelor's program, then you just follow the, the entrance procedure of the university. If the university has an entrance test as a part of its admissions process, you will have to do it. But most German universities do not have such entrance tests. In a majority of the cases, admission is given on the basis of a paper application. Okay. Similar questions are coming again and again about the student colleague and one-year bachelors. What is the procedure for the entrance exam for the student colleague? And can you sports scholarship, golf, the same questions. What are the suitable courses for medical studies? Anybody would like to take that? Or it's very complicated? Or complex, I would say. Yeah, I think Andreas also mentioned that a while back. The, the program for medicine in Germany is a very competitive program. It's a so-called NC subject, numerus clausus, which means that it's restricted entry. There are far more takers than seats available, so it's very competitive. It's, of course, entirely in German, and uh, it's not the way we know it here, where you have the initial four, five-year MBS, MBBS degree, and then followed by an MS or MD degree. This is more of an integrated long-term program, which takes almost six years, a little more, for you to complete. And uh, therefore, you need German language proficiency of C3 level, uh, sorry, C1 or C2 level. I think that's in a nutshell for all questions related to medicine yeah. that uh, should be a guiding. So keeping in mind the COVID pandemic, are there any chances for delay in application? Yeah, there will be for sure, but universities will be more accommodating, rest assured. Okay, I think this is a normal statement. I'm done with the B1 course, but I'm unable to give the exam due to lockdown. Once everything is normalized, you can always yeah, write the exam, nothing to worry about. Do we have any scholarship for student colleague? I think, have, haven't we taken this no, question already? Actually, uh, the student colleague itself is a government funded program, extra to the bachelor's and normal studies program. So there are normally no scholarships for student colleague, as far I know, uh, because I look for it back now. And uh, I don't know if, if there are any new one. Maybe Mr. Mahindra can tell us if he has any information that, but for my knowledge, goes there aren't any for student colleagues.
Yeah, I think what Dhruv said, I agree with Dhruv. That's mine. Uh, that, that's the information I have as well. Could you recommend some website where we can check university ratings? I've just now shared a website with you, university-ranking.de. That is one website where you will hopefully be able to find some information. What subjects are included for entrance exam for undergraduate engineering? I don't know what entrance exam this uh, person is, is referring to. Yeah, I mean, for, for I mean, if you it's have uh, specific questions, you can always contact day or day later on also. So, if your question is more specific, more clear, it'll be easier for them to uh, answer them. We'll move on to the next one. Are there any special courses for music as well, and any special courses for sound engineering? I want to pursue that as well with the subject. Who would like? Yes, I think one of the websites that we sh shared was the study in, study minus in dot de website. So if it is specific to any particular discipline that you're interested in and you want to find out more about universities and courses, then that would be a good place to start. All the questions that are specific to I want to study this subject or I want to study that subject, I would advise you all to go to the study uh, minus in dot de. That's the best way for you to start, and you'll get a whole listing of the universities that offer the subject of your choice. Okay. Do universities accept predicted IB grades since official IB results come out in July or August, and that's late for summer application? I believe that universities might accept them, but it could be a little problematic to get the visa on time, because uh, the universities are likely to then issue a conditional letter of admission which might make getting a visa on time a little bit of a hassle. So, but again, I have, we have no influence on the visa process. Okay. Andreas, would you know about any special courses for music and acting course? I want to pursue this um, in my career. I have to say that these are certainly courses that you will um, have to apply to a specialized school, high, uh, higher education. Um, so they Depending on the state of Germany, also there there are different um, different arts universities, art schools, and colleges. Um, there also might be a lot of private institutions that offer these courses uh, for especially for acting. I think this is not something you study at a traditional university. But um, as with all the other questions, I can only recommend you to uh, check out several databases, the DAB uh, database or the Hochschule Kompass website and you will find the courses and the respective universities and places. Are there any good commerce courses available in English language, the medium of instruction? Again, Preeti, I think I've just shared with the students the study minus in dot de website. All of these questions are just too specific and uh, really the student only knows what a good course is in his or her own definition. So I would guide all such questions to visit this website and to look at the options that are available. So your queries related to study in Germany, you should uh, mail it to the email addresses info at the, the, what Apurva right now has posted. Just mail your queries there. But be specific with the subject and also that you get a reply because they, I assume they receive thousands of queries every day. To get a reply, you have to be more specific. Um, student colleague, can you tell me something about the pre-internship? Uh, Anybody, any idea? Yeah, so the engineering what? courses have the, um, this, that they ha you have to have like a four weeks pre-internship to start your bachelor program. Since many of us would be doing student colleague anyway, so we do it in, in semester break, these pre-internships. So uh, we can get into the bachelor program. It's in, you get an offer letter, but there's a condition of four weeks or to eight weeks um, pre-internship that you can do in India or in Germany. My friends are only, only doing the semester break in student college. And, uh, and they got in the bachelor's program of the mechanical engineering or whatever kind of engineering you're looking for. And these pre-internships are mostly in engineering so far I've seen. So yeah, it, it, you can do that while doing a shooting colleague in your semester break. And yeah, so that's, that shouldn't be a problem. But you have to apply really early on time and uh, look for it 
uh, as soon as you get the offer letter so that you can get the proper internship and you can do it. Okay, the next phase is about the suitable courses, as Apurva and Andres have already posted the links. Please visit those websites and find out. It's a very generic question about the commerce, yeah? So you just can go there and find out what's suitable, what do you think what's suitable for you. And the score about the IIT JE has already been taken. I think that's the last question. I want to do my BDS from Germany. Can you tell me the suitable, I think, university or course? Yeah, again, for Bachelor of Dental Science, whatever we told you a while back related to studies of medicine, the same applies uh, for, for dentistry as well. So, yes, it is uh, included under medicine. You do not start, uh, you know, a BDS and followed by an MDS the way you do it in India. It's a medical degree, an integrated degree, six-year degree in German, uh, very competitive, and there's no guarantee of admission because there are very limited seats. And again, that, that's basically what you need to know, and it's German language proficiency of at least C1 or C2 will be required. Yeah. Okay, and one more question in the chat. Could you recommend some good architecture colleges in Germany? Is anybody having any idea about it? I think Bauhaus is one uh, very famous name for architecture and design. So uh, Weimar University, uh, Bauhaus, um, if you just search and Google a little there, you'll you, surely find you can, some renowned universities there. Uh, so you can find these. Uh, you can Thank find you so the, very much. The Hoax to Compass also and on plan. the DAD data bank also and all the other data bank, data bank as well. This information about uh, these uh, not so common courses are also sometimes available on these data banks. They are really helpful. Thank you so much for your patience. We have extended by 10 minutes, but I think uh, these kids were really excited and wanting to know. Thank you for all to the, all the participants for participating. A special thank you to Mr. Apurva Mahendru, Mr. Dhruv Khatta, Mr. Andreas Bars, and a very, very special thank you to my colleague, Prerit, who has been there throughout to support me. Thank you very much for taking time out, all of you. And see you in, yeah, somewhere in some form, hopefully soon, personally. And all the best, all the best to everyone. Nice talking to you guys. Bye. All the best.